Hey everyone, it's me HawkeyeG, and I'm back with another video. This time I'm doing some focus strategy on how to beat the vampire counts when playing as the dwarfs. I'll be talking about what units you should bring, what units they are likely to bring, and what your target priority should be when fighting them. I'll also comment on campaign strategy for these encounters when appropriate. So with those ideas in mind, let's get into the video. The first thing we'll look at is some campaign map strategy and ideas we should be aware of. So we're starting out with a look at the campaign map first to talk about a couple of things quick. I think this is important, especially when talking about the vampire counts because of their two special abilities, raise dead and the dead rise again. If you're not familiar with these, I'd recommend just doing a quick Google search and you'll get the idea. Um, but as a result, it means when we attack the vampires, we want to make a pretty serious commitment as to what we're doing. It's best to either stay fully on defense or make a very calculated attack. So what am I talking about here? What I mean is you either want them to try and attack you, right? I would ambush or wait near Carrick Zorn, let them bring multiple armies, and make sure that they get close enough so that even if they retreat, they can't truly escape and we can wipe them out, right? If an army has retreated and you attack it again, it's dead no matter what. So that overrides their advantage. Otherwise, if we can actually make a decision to fully launch an attack onto one of their settlements while their army is inside of it, then it means that when we win that battle, they're just dead. They can't escape. So the advantage to attacking on your turn means they can't use raise dead. And if you are attacking them in a settlement, they can't get dead rise again. If they attack you over their turn, I believe they can still use raise dead after the battle, though it's common to see them not do this. Um, but most importantly, you want to try to take very decisive fights in a very short span of time. You don't want a battle to be two or three turns long because then they will be able to recover a lot of their troops and it'll be hard to sustain. You need to take decisive victories, and so that's that's the way to do it. You either lure them into your territory so they can't fully retreat and you can ensure they're wiped out, or you wait until you have an opportunity to trap them in one of their settlements and make the attack. So those are just some thoughts about the campaign map that's important to keep in mind with fighting vampires. Now, let's talk about the kinds of units that they are typically going to bring to a battle encounter. The Vampire Counts have just as fun a roster as anybody else, but they really lean hard into their specialties. They've got lots of cheap, spammable infantry units. They've got some pretty good monstrous infantry. They've got flying monstrous infantry. They've got single entity versions of both. They also have some pretty strong cavalry with several different variants of that. Sometimes they'll bring some unique utility units like these corpse carts. They also have some special abilities, which you might want to review when you're going up against them in battle. And oftentimes you'll find that some of their heroes can be quite capable and a little bit stronger than heroes in a lot of the other rosters. Now, since we're talking about dwarves here, I think that one of the biggest things to recognize is their biggest threats will be some of their flying units and some of their cavalry units. Any enemy units with high speed and good mobility are going to be a serious threat for the dwarves because that's where they're lacking. They're slow especially units that are going to be able to easily get to our artillery and even our missile infantry. That's why we see things like Vargais and Black Knights, their cavalry and flying units, being a, a pretty severe threat to us with some of our strongest units being in that position. Their monstrous units, like the Crypt Horrors, might seem scary at first, but the thing is we shouldn't have too much trouble holding the line against them successfully. We can also take them down pretty easily with some missile fire because they're going to be big enough to tower over our units. And there might be a concern with their cheap infantry spam overwhelming us and preventing us from being able to maneuver as we want or get our units into the right defensive situation, but we will have the tools to deal with that effectively as well. So now that we have some ideas about what they're bringing to battle and what kinds of things are going to threaten us the most, let's take a look at what I suggest we'd bring in response. So before I talk about the units you should bring, I do want to preface this section with one thing. I play on Legendary Campaign and very hard battle difficulty, and the battle difficulty is important here. I love Dwarf Artillery, but if we look at the most recent patch notes for version 2.3, we can see some of the changes that they've made to the AI's willingness to proactively evade incoming damage from various types of projectiles, and on very hard specifically, they are also going to dodge artillery shots, which we don't see on any other battle difficulty besides very hard. So my compositions aren't going to have a large number of artillery in them. However, if you're playing on anything besides very hard battle difficulty, feel free to double or even triple the number of artillery if you're finding them fun and effective for you to use. 
Now, if we're in the early game of a campaign, you really won't have much choice in your roster anyways. You will have a lot of Dwarf Warriors, you're going to want to bring a lot of Quarrelers, and if you can fit some in, you maybe bring some grudge, a couple Grudge Throwers as well. You'd be able to soften up some of their infantry spam with your Grudge Throwers, going to do great against Skeletons, Zombies, even some of the Grave Guard. You'd have the Dwarf Warriors to hold the line against whatever makes it to you. And then with enough Quarrelers, it should be pretty easy to focus down whatever they bring. Even if they raise dead a couple of high quality units, the focus fire from the Quarrelers will put them back to rest in a pretty short span of time. So like I said, there's not too much to say about early game for Dwarfs as your forces are limited. Um, this might be from the perspective of someone like Thoric Ironbrow, we saw on the campaign map, might be fighting vampires to the west or to the east with limited options. But I think it's important to recognize that the basic Dwarf army setup should actually perform well against the early game vampires, provided you focus down their high quality units. They're going to be leaning a lot more into the infantry spam in the early game with maybe a little bit of monstrous units. And so it's about identifying and taking down those threats. So I don't think you'll have too much trouble there. What I really made this video to talk about is more focused on a campaign as Thorgrim or Ungrim, where you've progressed to the point you're fighting the vampire counts when they're fairly powered up. This should also mean that you've got a good deal of strength and can select from a good variety of units of your own. So here's what I think we should focus on selecting. Thunderers are a big one. These are a staple in any dwarf army from mid game through till the end. These will be especially effective at shooting down any number of the vampire's high quality units. Pretty much every high quality option that they have is going to be vulnerable to our thunderers. I also recommend bringing some flamethrower iron drakes. While these might not perform as well against some of their high quality targets, these are a great unit for clearing out the enemy chaff while having good damage potential otherwise. The, you don't need to bring very many of these to very rapidly eradicate a lot of the chaff, a lot of the infantry spam like I talked about earlier, and in doing so, you free up your dwarf warriors or longbeards to be able to block more significant threats without having to worry about getting surrounded, without worrying about, you know, weak units getting on top of your, your missile infantry and preventing them from fighting. Iron Drakes, it's really good to bring a couple of these because they're a really effective counter against some of the units you will definitely be seeing, and you don't need to commit a large number of Iron Drakes to be able to counteract those units. The last one I recommend is Slayers. I think Slayers can be a unit which are easy to overlook at times, uh, but if you think about it, they are a solution to a majority of the problems I talked about regarding what the enemy will bring. Flanking cavalry, monstrous infantry, flying monsters, all of these are going to be vulnerable to the Slayers. Now you bring these not with the purpose of fighting those enemies on the front lines, but you bring Slayers with the purpose of protecting your back line first and foremost. These will be especially helpful against the flying units if we've got Vargeist or even Felbats that make it to your back line. The Vargeis are going to not trade well against the Slayers. That's exactly what you want the Slayers for. Even the Cavalry are going to do okay against your Slayers, but your Slayers are going to do great against the Cavalry, especially compared to Quarrelers or Thunderers or Artillery in Melee. You want the Slayers there to protect those, those critical units in your back line. And sometimes, even the enemy Lords will have Flying Mounts too. A perfect option for an honorable death. Now, units like Slayers and Iron Drakes shouldn't be a majority unit. In fact, I don't really recommend more than two or three each of these, and you'll have to find what works best for you. Thunderers, you can definitely bring more of. These are versatile, and they're going to work against everything. Um, but the rest should be Dwarf Warriors, Longbeards, or Iron Breakers. And kind of depending on how much money you have is going to dictate what you bring. So only bring Iron Breakers if you can actually afford them. Otherwise, Dwarf Warriors or Longbeards. And finally, you should have two or three slots open for artillery. Now, I didn't really talk about artillery for this army selection, and that's because I think it's kind of in a weird place, especially because of my experiences playing on very hard battle difficulty, but let's just cover it briefly here. I think grudge throwers are good in the early game, but they fall off pretty quickly in the mid game. I actually like bringing a pair of cannons in the mid game. The AI doesn't dodge these projectiles. Certain, like if the projectile speed is too fast from like cannon type units, AI will not dodge it. So I like bringing these. They work great against enemy cavalry. They work good against armored infantry and monstrous infantry. I don't think you should try to target lords with them unless they're on something like a zombie dragon mount though. You also have organ guns available. Organ guns are great. 
They should be a part of any late game dwarf army. They'll work on almost anything. These are also going to be projectiles that the AI should not dodge. The only reason I didn't include them is you might not be... You might not have them when you're ready to fight the Vampire Counts, especially if you're playing as Ungrim Iron Fist. You just might not have leveled up any of your provinces to the point where you can get Oregon Guns. If you can get them, you should bring them. There, there's no doubt about that one. Flame Cannons, I think, are great too, but these are a unit that will suffer a little from the enemy artillery dodging. They are superior to the Iron Drakes in pretty much every way. They just lack mobility. So decide for yourself if that is an issue for you. The very last thing I want to touch on is your flying war machines here, the gyrocopters and gyrobomber. I think these are a great unit when there's a niche for them to fill, but I do think you should avoid them here. Uh, the various flying unit options that the vampire counts are going to have, they're going to prevent your gyro units from doing anything effective in a battle. You'll either spend the whole battle running them away instead of making good use of them, so you should just stick to other options in your roster instead. Now when it comes to the battles, you want to ensure you select the right targets. This means prioritizing high value targets and making good use of unit matchups. For Thunderers, you really want to be targeting down their flying units and their cavalry. You can see here I've got two each on the flying VAR guys, I've got one each on the flanks targeting down some cavalry. Gave myself overwhelming odds in this demonstration battle, just to illustrate the point. These VAR guys will pretty much be dead once they land on our units, won't be able to win any fights. We'll have some damage on their knights so that they'll do less damage to our units. We can protect the flanks successfully, retarget the rest of the flying monsters, and then wipe out the cavalry. So with Thunderers, these are the kind of units you want to prioritize. After you've taken out their flying units and weakened or killed their cavalry, you want to take out any large units that are left on the front lines, like their monstrous infantry. This can include lords, uh, but I don't think you should focus on lords until their flying units are defeated and their cavalry units are severely weakened. Thunderers could also focus on units like corpse carts or black coaches as well, perhaps even before firing on the cavalry, just to make sure that your infantry doesn't suffer too many losses in the engagement. With the iron drakes, you want to focus down their infantry units. Now, this can and should include graveguard. You're going to want to do a lot of damage to those if you can. Uh, but it doesn't really matter which units it is. It, it can still include zombies and skeletons. You can see one volley, and this unit of skeleton warriors is ready to start crumbling. One volley over here. This unit of graveguard is pretty damaged. Won't start crumbling yet. With some good positioning, we can get a lot of damage on some units very easily. Iron Drakes are just a great support unit. You can see a couple shots on these zombies and skeleton warriors, and I don't even have to worry about these Iron Drakes being fought. They can kill off these Graveguard really easily. We've also got a flank coming up over here, but as you can see, the Iron Drakes will honestly do enough damage that it'll basically stagger these things in place. Like, these troops are approaching, well, the zombies just got wrecked, and now they're going to lose their leadership and be put back. Skeleton Warriors, about to charge my Iron Drakes, yeah? Not so much anymore. Basically, with the Iron Drakes, you want to have them reduce enemy numbers to free up your line holding units to do more important things. Now, with Slayers, and you can use Giant Slayers, of course, if you want. I'm just using Slayers because it's easier for the example. With Slayers, you want to focus on protecting your backline. Especially if you bring artillery, artillery are going to be vulnerable. In fact, in this battle, I'm going to find myself wishing I had brought a third Slayer unit, because that would really help. But here's where you can kind of see all the pieces of the army composition coming together. We've got Thunderers in the center. They're going to start focusing down some of these flying units to try and prevent them from getting in. I didn't do a good enough job there, because I was focused on trying to get the Slayers in a good spot. But having this Slayer unit intercept Black Knights with Lance and Barding, really, like, easy win. These Slayers didn't even micro them. They got charged by the Black Knights. Still going to win. Focused on trying to get my Thunderers to take down these Varg guys, maybe remove things around a little bit, and we've still got Iron Drakes to just absolutely dismantle any of these incoming infantry units, leaving our Longbeards to go and do whatever they want. So this is kind of a little bit of an example to see how all the different pieces fit together. You can see again we're trying to focus down these cavalry units. We've got the Slayers able to support these Longbeards against the Varg guys, allowing the, the Longbeards to be freed up to do other things. We've also got a Vampire Lord here on a flying mount. That means they're a large unit. That means once these Slayers are done dealing with the Var guys, they can move on to this Lord. And you can see that Lord is beating these Longbeards. It will not beat those Slayers. And you can also see 
this cavalry got a pretty good charge off on the grudge throwers, and we didn't even have slayers in position. Like I said, I would have liked a third slayer unit, perhaps, to be able to help protect this, because it is taking damage. Um, but you can see how the slayers are doing a great job just defending. This one's taking a one versus two against cavalry units, and it's winning. So, you love to see it. Now, in order to demonstrate all of these concepts working together, I've actually made a separate video where I showcase a battle between dwarfs and vampire counts. It will show most of these interactions, and I'll be able to talk about all these different things and how they overlap, and how these sorts of fights go, you know, what sorts of things you want to focus on. Um, though I can't make the AI perform in a specific way, that's why I did these mini compositions to kind of get them to do what I wanted to do by limiting their unit selection. Anyways, it'll give you a better idea of what to expect in these battles and how the flow of combat will progress. Now, I've linked the video in the card in the top right, as well as in the description below, so check it out if you think you will help. Otherwise, if what I've said about the, you know, reason you're using units and the little bit of the kind of building blocks that I've showcased here are enough, then maybe that's good enough for you, but I wanted to provide that demonstration as well. Otherwise, with that being said, I've covered everything I wanted to for this video. It's important to identify not only which units of yours to bring, but also why you should bring them and what kinds of targets they should be focusing on. I believe this information will help players better identify how to avoid some common mistakes they might make, or if you're having trouble dealing with certain kinds of enemies, what the right tool is to use. This should take your gameplay to the next level. Fighting against the vampires can be tough because of their large numbers as well as their campaign mechanics, so it is important to, to take very good value trades against them repeatedly over time. Eventually, you will wear them down enough to give yourself some momentum, and you can put them in an ever-worsening position. Now if you did enjoy the video, please give it a like, and remember to subscribe so you can keep up with future content from me. If you have any questions about this video or other aspects of this matchup and campaign, feel free to ask down below. And if you have any tips of your own for fighting against the vampire counts that you think I missed, be sure to share them with us. As always, thanks for watching, have a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.